Hello, everyone. My name is Christina. I'm the Family Programs Coordinator at the Vancouver Art Gallery. I'm so excited to welcome you all to our, this edition of Art at Home. And the Vancouver Art Gallery, where I work, it's situated on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nation. I also want to say that the word unceded, it means that the rights to the lands and the waters, they were never given an agreement. They were taken without permission. Where I'm joining you from today is actually the unceded traditional territory of the Comox Nation. And to honor the ancestors of the land that I am on, I commit to learning more from Indigenous communities, to uplifting Indigenous voices, and to learning how I can always do better to care for and respect the land that gives so much to me. And you know what? If you would like to learn a little bit more about the land that you are on, the history of it, and how you can learn from elders and community members. There's this really cool app. I'm just popping it in the chat right now. It's called Whose Land. And wherever you are in the world, you can click on Whose Land app and it will tell you a little bit more about the ancestral territory. So today um, we have a really exciting session. I'd like to introduce our artist that we're working with today, Stilo Star. How are you doing, Stilo? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone at home. I hope everyone's nice and cozy and ready to do some cut and paste. We are so thankful that you're here with us. I'll say a few things. I'm going to, of course, let you introduce yourself. But uh, I did want to share that Stilo discovered the power of creating something out of nothing at a very young age and has been doing so ever since. And I want to ask all of you out there, um, to think about maybe what's something that's really surprising that you've used to create artwork with yourself. So maybe I know for me, maybe it's something that you find in the recycling or it's something that other people would think of as trash and you can use the power of transformation uh, to completely turn that into an artwork. So feel free to add that into the chat. And in just a minute, I'm going to share the way that the chat function works. So as I mentioned, so Stilo uses found, repurposed materials um, and to create images that are centered on Afrofuturism. We're going to talk a little bit about what that means as well. So in the session today, we're going to hear from Stilo herself about how to collage and cut and paste. Um, it really is used in her work to celebrate Black creatives and heroes that have inspired your life and your path and your art practice. Uh, we're going to think about ways that each of us can celebrate and uplift Black creatives, inventors, scientists, activists, um, by through the artwork that we create. And Stilo, then, the fun part is Stilo is going to show us uh, how we can all transform these reused or found materials from around your house, it could be books, it could be construction paper, into your own futuristic universe. So what I'm going to do really quickly is just share some of the materials that we might be able to use today. So for example, colored construction paper, heavy paper or cardstock for the background, patterned or scrapbooking paper. I love a good patterned paper um, and combining different patterns. Scissors, glue, pencils or pencil crayons, if you don't have all of these materials, work with what you got. I'm a big supporter of working and making things work as best we can. So I mentioned something called the chat earlier on. Um, today, we want to hear your ideas and your thoughts. And what we want to do is also present some questions that maybe you want to respond to in the chat. So if you take a look at this image right here, circled at the bottom, you can see the chat button. So if you click on that, you can click on it, type in some answers, or have an adult that's close to you type in some answers, or not just answers, your thoughts and ideas too. I also want to just quickly go over something that we can all agree on together to create a safe and welcoming space. So by joining this session, we agree to take pride in speaking up and sharing. We agree to be open, curious, and respectful to celebrate each other's ideas. And we agree to listen and learn from each other with care and kindness and use our, our comments to uplift each other. I think these are generally good things to think about in life and we wanna make sure that we're doing that today. Okay, one more thing I'm going to mention is we do have live transcription available in the session today. 
if that is something that will um, help you participate today or be the best way for you to participate today, what you can do is you can click on the button that you can see outlined in this image and it will auto generate transcription. So keeping in mind, it's important to know that auto generating transcript, it doesn't always get the words exactly right, but we're hoping to have this service at least um, engage uh, those who would prefer to engage with that way. Okay, so now let's get to the fun stuff. Stilo, I have read that you describe yourself as a visual alchemist, and I love that phrase. And I'm wondering what everybody else thinks. What does the word alchemist mean to you? You can pop your answers in the chat. What does alchemist mean to you? Mm. So for example, I can ask you in a minute, Stilo, also. For me, I think of like an alchemist as someone who blends things together, whether they're um, incredibly magical things or whether they're physical things, blending things together to create something new and magical. What do you, what does it mean to you, Stilo? I always picture like a wizard or like some magical being just kind of whipping up the air around them and then creating something magical that they can hold in their hands. And that's kind of, you know, it's kind of fun to say that I'm an artist, but I also really enjoy the idea of, of seeing myself as a magical creative being. So visual alchemist is kind of where that came from. That's so beautiful. It's such a nice way. And we all get to define uh, how we are in the world and exist in the world in many ways. So I love that idea, thinking of just ways that you can completely just create something magical from your imagination, not defined from anything else. I noticed in the chat, Madison mentioned something surprising you've used as scrap pieces of glass, hopefully with that old supervision, Ooh. don't try this at home, but I've done that too. And I think that's a really interesting way of repurposing or reusing materials in Absolutely. a cool way. So I also wanted to mention um, Stylo is a creative movement facilitator mm -hmm. and you're based in Hamilton, Ontario. I am. Yeah, well, I'm in Vancouver right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that your work, it centers black people, fantasies of no, or sorry, notions of Afro future, fantastical, kind of that magic that we just talked about too. Mm -hmm. Um, really rooted in, in imagining what the future could and will be. Um, but also that you do mindfulness workshops. I learned mm -hmm. that about as well. So for everybody at home, you can think about what kind of, maybe it's images, give you that sense of like a mindful peace or a presence. You can type your answers in the chat if you like. And um, you can also think of maybe there are ways that you create art. Stilo, I've heard that for you, it's cut and paste, has that healing uh, power. Indeed, I love cut and paste. I know so many friends that love to paint and take pictures and maybe even make videos and films. And I just tumbled in cut and paste and it just feels like I'm able to really express myself this way. So I'm really happy that I'm able to share this with everyone. I am too, and I think this is going to be a great, um, just kind of like a tool, thinking of cut and paste as something that's a powerful way of creating and sending messages, not just necessarily as a craft, which is wonderful to engage in crafts as well, but how can we really create powerful messages by putting different images and layering textures together? Um, I want to ask you one more question, Stilo, and then I'm going to pass it over to you to share some of your artworks. Um, we talked about the word Afrofuturism. Mm -hmm. So can I ask, what does that mean to you? So the, the term Afrofuturism actually was coined in 1994, um, and it was really supposed to be, or at least it started as the umbrella term for Black media in sci-fi fantasy, um, so a lot of literature actually. And it talks about how we kind of melt in technology and the future, but then also our past and a lot of our ancestral heritages and kind of make this new world out of it. Um, and that's kind of what Afrofuturism was for literature. And then it kind of just spread 
over to visual arts and music and film, you can kind of see it everywhere. Um, and even though the term was coined in 1994, I should say that it's been around for a very, very, very long time. Um, for anyone who might know, or maybe your parents might know, a uh, famous jazz musician Louis Armstrong was also a very big collage artist and his stuff was pretty out of this world for that time. So um, yeah, it's kind of Afrofuturism in a nutshell. I had no idea that Louis Armstrong was a collage artist. He was, um, yeah. This is why having conversations is so important. So I love that idea of Afrofuturism as imagining new worlds mm -hmm. and that igniting the imagination and really bringing so many different aspects of the world we live in together to create something completely new. Thank you so much for sharing that. Do you want to take a look at maybe at some of uh, the artworks? Maybe you want to share a little bit about? Sure. So this piece, um, one of my favorite things to do. So as a collage artist, you can kind of collage on anything, on any surface. Um, like we mentioned earlier, like Christina mentioned earlier, it's really the key thing is to create with what you have where you have it. Um, and so what I like to do is keep a little collage journal. And this is one of the entries from a couple of years ago. And I would just flip through magazines and find really stunning images that I felt um, maybe might match in color. There's a lot of blues and greens in this piece. Um, and then I, I kind of saw these gems and they kind of looked like tears. And I was wondering how can I make them look like tears without taking over her face too much and um yeah it was a lot of experimentation and and that's kind of the thing that I think is the most important when it comes to cut and paste and collaging is you just if you ask what if see what happens and you know make that make that jump take that chance and you might be pleasantly surprised with what you come up with I love this piece this is one of my favorite uh, journal entries yeah I just noted in the chat, like what a fabulous way of, of being in the world to have this kind of a collage journal and imagine possibilities and reimagine possibilities by arranging and rearranging the objects and such a great way to really ignite the imagination. And for all of us looking at it, we all might see different things mm -hmm. in the work. So you can even type in the chat, what are some things that you notice about this artwork? And maybe we can think about that too um, in some of the next works that we take a look at. Yes, get some ideas on how to create your own worlds. This definitely is a very layered piece, I notice. Mm -hmm. So you have not just a background, a foreground, and a middle ground. You're building and building and building to really kind of create that effect of an imagined world. But like you said, if you ask what if, who knows what could happen? I think that's a great no. way to too. Yeah. So people are noticed, uh, it seems like a scene from lucid dreaming. Interesting. Ooh. I like the, the, the word lucid itself is such a great word, that flow and that movement. Um, someone else noticed uh, what looks like a castle and a bridge. Someone Ooh. else noticed color. Think about too, how you would describe the colors that you notice in this artwork. For me, they're just like pop, like really pop of colors not to mention the different kind of textures. You notice what kind of look like gems or diamonds. And then, so we have a lot of natural elements here too. Yeah, it's one of my favorite elements to work with. I love working with gems and sand and rocks and trees, flowers, all sorts of natural things. Cool, and do you collage all those materials together? I do, I do. Yeah, I, I have collections of clippings that I keep at home, so it's easier for me, like I play like kind of like, um, for anyone who knows like Mad Libs or Ad Libs, I, I like to basically categorize my clippings and like stones and crystals and then like flowers and leaves and then like animals and humans. And I'll take one from each and kind of jigsaw and play around and see what I can kind of come up with. So um, I do always love kind of mixing all of those natural elements together though. Another great uh, idea. You're so organized to have oh, all of the things you collect, but to have kind of general categories so you can take from those kind of categories. Very like cool. an organized chaos. It, it is very messy, but it is, it's organized in such a way that like, I at least know where I can find what I need to look for. <laughs> I like thinking of just life in general as exactly. an organized chaos that we navigate. <laughs> 
Let's take a look at another artwork here. Mm -hmm. So you can think about too, what do you notice? Everyone who's joining us from their homes, what do you notice in this work? What really stands out to you? And Stilo, maybe you can share um, what's so powerful about this work for you. Yeah. Well, we just uh, recently celebrated uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I know it's more heavily in the States than it is here, um, but it was observed here. And many of you may recognize this lovely, powerful woman as Coretta Scott King. And I believe this was before she married. Um, and this image was taken from a Black Current Affair, Affairs magazine from the 50s called Jet. Um, and she was one of the cover ladies. And it was just such a beautiful picture. And uh, I was kind of um, experimenting with Xerox photo transfer with these collages. So you'll notice she appears kind of black and white on top of everything else. And that is because those are actually photocopies that I've glued face down onto my collage and then moist after it's dried, moistened and rubbed off all the paper and all that's left is the ink from the photocopy. Um, so I was really interested in how that looked when it was layered and that little star motif that kind of happens up in that corner, I was really, really happy with how that turned out. And that was pure experiment. So I always tell people if you, again, just give it a shot. If you think, what if, see how it happens, see what, see what falls into place. And this was a very happy, uh, I won't even call it a happy accident, a happy experiment. I think experimenting is so important in yes. all our practice and all modes of expression that uh, when we want to share a message, someone noticed um, a snowflake that looked like it was made nice. out of images of Greta Scott King. Um, someone else don't. So I've had this question with multiple artists that I've worked with um, that use, uh, you know, transfers or mm -hmm. that repurpose images in different way. Um, Someone noticed absolutely gorgeous composition. Is there any issue with using someone else's images from Cards Magazine's copyrights? There is definitely always um, a little bit of hesitation. And a lot of my favorite mediums to work with typically are um, pretty dated. So from 50s, 60s up to maybe the 80s, um, which I would like to think is still not that long ago, but apparently it is now. <laughs> Um, but I, I like to use older images just so that isn't necessarily as big as of an issue. Copyright definitely is an issue. Um, and it makes it harder to maybe like sell pieces or original pieces. Um, but the idea here for me and a lot of the work that I do is I like to alter things as much as I can and give them new purpose, give them new life, give them new um, I guess, visual appeal. So the idea is to kind of mess up the image enough that it won't be um, maybe detected as, as a copyright infringement. But that is definitely something that um, I keep really, really close to me as a consideration. And especially as I'm going further now into my practice using um, more cut and paste and found objects, it's, yeah, it's definitely something that I've considered. That's a great question. Thank you very much. And you have to consider so many different things as a Absolutely. practicing artist. For sure. Um, I also always think of it as all art is inspired by other art. And um, the ways, you know, if your work is repurposing something else existed before and it's your own um, translation and expression, because like you said, you do completely transform it so much. Right. Um, let's take a Thank you for everyone for your questions. Keep them yeah. coming. Um, let's take a look at another work. Here, mm -hmm. Let me see. there. We, oops. Ah, Pat Rainey, who was another starlet and Hollywood actress um, from the fifties. This one was another venture and experimentation. I really loved how her face is obscured in the two middle ones, and then how the earrings from the two outer pieces are kind of like these weird accents on her forehead. Um, this whole series, so a bit more about this series, it was called 89 Danes. It's 89 different uh, hand cut collages that I did by hand. And each one was completely spontaneous and experimental. So there was no planning, there was no sketching. It was, I would take the photocopy of the person that I had um, in mind to make the creation for, and then I'd sit and think, if she had a dressing room, 
or if she had like a powder room or just her own little space, what would that space look like? Colors, patterns. Uh, with this series, I also used um, some found lace trimmings that I had um, donated and given to me from other crafty and artsy people. And it was so much fun. I couldn't believe how much I actually completed by the time I was done. Um, but this, again, it's all experimentation in the layering of the paper, um, in the layering of the photocopies, and even the lace trimming. And it's just, it's always so fun to kind of see what comes out of just sitting there and just seeing what happens. Just seeing what happens. Yeah. Um, so I was asking, what's the size? Or in art, sometimes we say, what's the scale of these mm -hmm. artworks? So this, these pieces are all 12 by 12 inches. So they're about the size of a record cover. Um, and that's actually the size of cardboard that I'll be working on today. It's, I like working in squares. I like working in um, mediums that kind of resemble record covers. I actually, usually I have some music playing, but music is one of my um, tools of inspiration and motivation whenever I'm making things. And I always end up making things that look like album covers. I have no idea why, but I really, I love that square one-to-one um, -one kind of format. Yeah. That's a really interesting context or way of describing that yeah. process. Not just see, all artists are always making choices, experimenting, but still making those choices of how to present the work. Exactly. Um, yeah, let's take a look at another Ooh. really active work. I'm gonna ask everyone to enter in the chat what do you see in this work? Maybe it's the first thing that you notice or maybe it's what's going on here? This was one of my very first ventures into, okay, I am doing cut and paste as my art medium. Um, this is 2013, yeah, quite a while ago. And this was another, you know, I, I love Frida Kahlo and I had a article that had some gorgeous photos of her. And I thought, well, what if I were to either pay homage or create an ode to her or build her her own space? And this is kind of what came up with. I'm, I'm really interested in building spaces and worlds that you can kind of step into at least for a little bit. Uh, it's, I feel like it's always nice to have a little bit of a visual escape, especially right now. <laughs> I would have to agree. Someone else noticed the huge cheetah in the forest. Yeah, like, it's that's chilling. <laughs> it is, but it's also such a dramatic and the scale of it, it's very large in comparison to the figure of Frida. Mm -hmm. And um, if anyone hasn't heard of this artist before, Frida Kahlo, you can look her up, incredible mm -hmm. uh, modern artist. Um, and I love that you created a world for her. So the idea of creating our own worlds, but also creating worlds for other people that inspire you. Yeah. All right, do you want to share a little bit about this work? Someone else is saying they noticed the cheetah, but let's take a look. What do you notice in this work? What really jumps mm. out to you? I noticed the flower that looks like it's in what we call the foreground or kind of like the front. It looks like a special kind of flower to me. I don't know mm -hmm. if you're thinking I, that too, Kilo. I believe that was a lotus from like, or a lily, a lily from a lily pad, I believe which funny enough, I think I have one of those images today that I'll be using again. Um, I love flowers. I love especially aquatic flowers are really pretty. And um, a lot of the images that I get are from like older ge National Geographics. And for whatever reason, that was a really common image to find in a lot of older issues of National Geographic. Um, this whole collage though is another piece or another page out of my collage journal. So this was, I wish, I wonder if I have the date. I think it's 2018, September I remember 2018. I usually write a little bit of the full date kind of tucked in on these collages here. And yeah, this was, um, so I used to host in the before times, I would host a full collage or a free collage night um, at a friend's space and have, you know, people come in from all sorts of places and they can come in and collage with all the stuff that we have. We provide all these books and magazines for everybody. Um, and so this was from one of those nights. So it was just kind of like, we're chatting, we're kind of listening to music and I'm just kind of going through images and 
seeing what clicks together. Um, I really liked how her hands kind of draped over that um, this child's shoulders. It just kind of looks like they're being protected. So yeah, that's kind of where that came from. And someone in the chat is noticing the gems in the yes. figure's hair. The giant um, crystal. <laughs> that um, theme emerge again in your work someone else knows the expression in the eyes and you can think about what words you would use to describe that expression but mm -hmm. it's that direct gaze like it's really directed right into your own eyes as you look yeah. at it yeah it's, it's very powerful. intense well, how about, I think we have, oh, this is a cool project that you work on. Maybe we'll take a look yeah. quickly at Stilo and then we'll get right into uh, making along with you. Yeah, so this was, this is a bigger look at the series I was talking about earlier, 89 Dames. Um, I was very, very fortunate enough to have the whole show exhibited at the Art Gallery of Hamilton back in 2017. Um, and this was the exhibit. And the idea of the exhibit was to kind of stage it as though it's, it is somebody's living room. So you have art on the walls, but then when you go in, there was also a little pavilion where you can make your own collages. You can kick your feet up on the beanbag chairs. Uh, it was a really great exhibit. And we ended up exhibiting um, this series once again at the Art Gallery of Burlington just two years ago in 2020. Um, but this was a really great, element of the exhibit having the workspace there right in the uh, in the space in the gallery space um, it was really well received and I don't know if it's been mentioned but I have a hashtag people can use so the idea was you can make your collage you can take uh, an image with your phone and then you can post it to social media with the hashtag cut paste chill um, and that is there. And it was really great to kind of see how people um, interact with collage in a public setting, you know, when they're not really asked to create anything, they just kind of spontaneously like come into a room and they're like, oh, okay, I guess I can cut and paste for five, 10 minutes and see what they come up with. And yeah, it was fun. I, I really do miss that show. Thanks so much for sharing. What a beautiful um, opportunity opportunity to just offer that to, like you're doing today just offering what brings you like healing and energy and creative expression to other people it's so generous I also I don't want to miss something else that was mentioned in the chat about a previous work mm -hmm. um someone is saying incredible henna tattoos notice those in your other work as well I'll just flip back to that as I don't want to miss any comments yeah. and that really is a powerful um aspect of the imagery absolutely and it, I believe uh, one of the first pages in the collage journal also had um, the one with the tears. I believe she had some tattoo or some body work um, on her hand as well. And yeah, that is definitely a reoccurring theme. It's striking to me as far as um, photography goes. And I think it always works out really well. Yeah, she's got some sweet little hand tattoos there. Um, but yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what do you think, everybody? Maybe what we'll do now is we, I'm going to hand it over to you, Stilo, to do what you love to do the most. Yeah. Um, and we can fo I'll follow along. We mentioned some of the materials that you can use. I think you'll be surprised and interested in some of the materials that Stilo is going to use that you shared with me earlier. It can be from anything around your house. Maybe it's the colors or the patterns that stand out to you. Maybe it's words that you notice. But I'm going to hand it over to you, Stilo, as you're just setting up your video file here and I'm going to also everyone feel free to jump in with questions and comments for Stilo as we go. I'm going to also and fabulous. I'm just going to take a minute here and okay. take it away. Okay, everyone, let's get started. I'm excited. I've been looking through some clippings all day today. Um, just want to make sure that I have a good eye on my camera over here. You know what? I'm going to pin myself over here. There we go. Ah, right, so let's get started. I have all these clippings that I've been amassing today. Got this cute little baby. This headline I thought was really interesting because we're going to be working on world building and creating a future. And allegedly, this baby will live to be 120. Here's hoping. Uh, we've got this candle that I really kind of liked and wanted to use. You can chop off that bottom part there. 
There's that lily pad and lotus flower or lotus or li lily pad lily, I guess it wouldn't be a lotus. What I really wanted to work on today, what I want to kind of show you with um, the way that I layer my pieces is I found this really beautiful ring and I thought, wouldn't it be kind of cool to give this baby a little bit of a crown, maybe make some kind of space royalty that lives in some kind of arid, I don't know, I, I found this image from, this was also, this is from the same issue of the National Geographic that I found that baby from. And this is a picture of the moon with fireworks um, being photographed in front of it. So I thought it kind of gave me this really cool like warp speed type uh, effect. So I'm gonna use that as my background. And I just wanna show you first for, you know, clean everything off here. This is the sheet of cardboard that I am working with. Oh. Don't get out of focus. There we go. There we go. So this is the cardboard that I'm using. It is 12 by 12. Um, it is bigger than my cell phone screen right now. So we'll do, I'll slide it around, make sure that you have, you know, full access to that. This image is not as tall, uh, but it is wider than. So I'm gonna nudge this further maybe up here. And then I found this clipping of this beautiful mountainside. And I think that would be nice to kind of fill up here. So the way I really like to start with my collages is like, I like to start from the background and I like to establish that whatever piece of card or uh, maybe it's a recycled hardcover book cover, um, whatever I'm using, I want to make sure that the background's completely cared for and covered. So this will be cut and we'll determine where that will be soon. So I'm going to get this glued down. Also, you've noticed maybe that there's this seam here that's running down the middle. And that's because I took it from the magazine. It's a magazine spread. And I tried to rip it out as cleanly as possible. And I had a couple of nicks here. Um, it's been taped who's back here, a little marsupial guy. Um, so it's been taped together to kind of make sure that it's not uh, thrown askew. It is kind of crooked, but that's okay. But what I'd like to do, and what I tend to do when I use a lot of spreads in my collages, is this is not a problem if you throw in some kind of textural element. I have this old Kleenex box, and you can literally use anything. I save my Kleenex boxes because sometimes, or most of the time, actually, I buy them because I like these patterns. And I think this beautiful pattern of this peacock feather is perfect. So I cut some out already. And I have a strip here. And, you know, a lot of this for me right now is planning. So I'm just kind of figuring out what can be thrown around. That kind of looks cool there. There's no rhyme or reason. It could be, it's anything you want for your world. So I, I was talking with Christina earlier and I thought, you know, a good question to kind of start off when you're planning your background and you're planning what you'd like to do is picture you have your own personal world and universe in your bedroom. When the door is closed, you go upstairs, or you go down the hall, and you go to open the door, and you can step into a brand new space. It doesn't have to have gravity. It doesn't have to have a sky. It doesn't have to have ground. It can be whatever you like it to be. What would you do? How would you make it look? And that's kind of how I like to approach all of my collage making is if I had this space and if I had access to this space, like as soon as I'm completed this collage and I can, you know, put it on my wall and all of a sudden the wall opens up into a whole new world and it's that image, what would that look like? So that's what we're gonna start with. So to get everything kind of established with the background, at least with the moon and the mountains, we're gonna get this glued down first. And then I think we're gonna work on our little baby princess. I'm really excited to see how this works out because it just, it looks like the ring might actually fit right around her head. 
So we'll see. We'll see. So jumped around. I probably should have gone into my tools, but I can show you what we're using now. So you have a couple of options, um, especially if you're working at home and you don't maybe have access to like a glue stick. These are some of my favorite glue sticks to use. Elmer's glue is great. Any kind of dollar store glue stick, fantastic to use. Um, if you don't have glue sticks, you can use white glue. You can use Mod Podge. You can even use flour and water. Um, you just have to get the consistency right. And there are tons of recipes online. Even like a wheat paste is good. Um, there are ways to glue things down. I mean, even if you'd like, you can use scotch tape. It's however you'd like to put your world together. Um, I guess in terms of tape, you wanna make sure that you're taping things down so they actually stay together so nothing gets ruined when you're actually done. Um, okay, we can go into scissors. So scissors, let me see what's going on in the chat here. Mm -hmm. Unable to see the materials. Oh, let's see. You made an adjustment to to pin the materials here. So hopefully um, that it's visible to everyone. Let me know in the chat if you can. Yeah, let us know. And, and if then, anything uh, else, I'll start over again too. That's no problem. Um, my favorite things though, of course, are my blades or my scissors. This is like my everyday, it's not really a kitchen pair of scissors, although I do have a pair of those as well, but these are some really nice craft scissors that I use. Um, safety scissors are also really good if you need help using any kind of sharp objects while collaging. Um, I would suggest this tool more for maybe the adult collagers because it's a little more, it's a little sharper, but some might recognize these as cuticle scissors. And that's exactly what these are. You can get these at the dollar store at the pharmacy, really cheap. They've got a really cute little edge to them and a bit of a curve. And they're really good for small cuts. So I had cut these out prior to the workshop tonight, just in the interest of saving time, because I didn't really want to bore you all with my little fine cutting. But these scissors are perfect for these tiny little rivets to make sure that you're, you know, maintaining the integrity of the image. So it's not all just like smooth ed edges. Love, love my cuticle scissors. Of course. We got the box cutter. Please be careful with this. Always cutting away from yourself. I also use X-Acto knives. Um, I suggest exactly the same. Just make sure that you're cutting away from yourself. And, you know, if the blades do get old, um, you know, if you find one of these kicking around in your garage, do make sure that the blade is not rusty. That is um, very dangerous for you. And just also it will mess up your paper. So just be safe, be careful with your blades before you get into all the cutting and the pasting. So with that said, I wanna make sure you can see hands now. Good, good, good. Okay, cool. So I will show the glue again, um, just Elmer's, Elmer's glue stick. And this is power glue stick. Um, doesn't really matter what brand, it could be Yoohoo, it could be, could be anything, uh, whatever you have around. And like I said, wheat paste, um, flour and water is, is great. So let's see. You know what? I do want to get to the baby first before I glue this down because, and I'll tell you why, <laughs> what I really like to do is cutting out all of my uh, options first because the way I like to play with collage is I make kind of a puzzle and I play around with that puzzle long before I glue anything down. Um, and I know I said I was going to get the background done first, but for the interest in time, I would like to show you, and I would also like to see these two fit together because I think that would be a really cute addition. And then I would have her kind of floating in front of the moon there as this new moon princess. So. Forgive me for any shaking of the desk that will ensue in my south paw cutting, but we'll get her out here. And you know, there's some text on the shoulder here. We're not going to worry about that. There are tons of ways that we can cover that up. We can, you know, make it as though 
It was never there in the first place. So the easiest thing is just to kind of isolate out where we're cutting. And I like to go in with my big scissors first, cut out any of this negative space. We're not gonna be too precious about the hair and the curls, especially up here where the text is. We're gonna improvise. And if I get out of screen, you guys make sure to yell at me because <laughs> I wanna make sure you can see what I'm doing. All right. So that's kind of for now. We're gonna go in with the cuticle scissors, but I just, I'm really anxious. I really wanna see if this is gonna work. And if it will, wow, indeed. We might even put that word in too. I like to use words in my collage as well. I didn't include any uh, examples of that this round, but I also have, an envelope filled with all sorts of words. In fact, if I don't end up using this, this is gonna go in my envelope of words. Um, maybe you don't want to create a world that has physical things. Maybe you want to create a world that has words and it's a poem or a song. Uh, it's really whatever you'd like it to be. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna make sure Without messing up, I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. I don't know if anyone has uh, any experience with cut and paste, but for me, one of my favorites and probably maybe even more so than putting the piece together, one of my favorite things to do is to cut. I like spending time with images that I'm really kind of taken by and then taking the time to hold it up close and see what the edges look like and see what the printing is like. A lot of printing from older magazines have changed over the years. So it's really interesting to kind of even see like what the paper quality is like or even the makeup because this looks pink, but if you go real close, you can see all the little colors that make up this image. I'm also just a sucker for paper crafts and paper things. I love paper, so. Oh, I slowed down a little bit. Okay, let's speed it up. So, maybe a question for the chat. Um, if you could include any thing, you could bring one thing for sure with you to this other universe. It could be a person, place, or yeah, I guess it could be a place. It could be a thing. What would you bring with you? I'm surprised my cat hasn't joined me, but I would definitely bring my cat. He's asleep on my couch right now. Um, he's a wonderful little companion. And he actually often sits up here on the desk with me while I'm collaging. So it's interesting, he's, he's out cold right now. Your art supplies, I would too. But then I wonder, what if your world is made of art supplies? Would you need to bring them? Or could you just like, mess around with the things in your world. Okay, so we have that cut out. I think it's gonna work, guys. Okay, so this, my cat doesn't. Um, it's really interesting. He'll like sit and watch. He's not so much of a let me in on the, on the action too. He's very much like a let me sit and watch and see what you're doing. Um, but yeah, he's, he's definitely great company to have around. I'm going to go in and finalize the cut on this little baby because I think that will determine whether or not that head is going to fit right in that ring. And I think it will. I think, I think we've got a crown for our, our baby queen. So again, not being precious about the hair too much anywhere where there's like a lot of maybe that white background, we can kind of omit that. 
and you think, you know, it might look weird, but once you cut everything out, you can kind of go in and see what you'd like to get rid of or what you'd like to contour a bit better. And, hmm. Yeah, we'll get rid of some of those curls here. We're going to improvise. And around the ear. So you see how that, let me bring it a little bit closer. See how the curve of the scissors just follows the contour of the image so nicely. That's what I really like about these scissors and they, they're really nice and precise. So if you are already good with wrangling a blade or a pair of scissors and you don't need any help in that respect, Look into getting a pair of these if you're really interested in doing some detailed cuts. All right. Now is the exciting part. So what I like to do, and um, in the piece with the lady with the tears, I did the exact same thing. Um, I like to go in and kind of it's not even a layering, it's like a, a weaving. I like to consider it more of a weaving. So I'm going to be cutting out this negative space here. And if I'm lucky and if I've gauged it right, this might or should be able to shimmy right down over the head and kind of look like some kind of headgear. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's see. So the easiest way, using these scissors again, just going to pierce a hole in there. And then go right up to the edge and cut my way around. I'm so excited. Do you guys think it's going to work? Let me know in the chat, do you think it'll work? And you know what, if it doesn't, there, I think I've already figured out a way to improvise. And this is kind of the fun bit of collaging. Uh, it's a lot of problem solving. And, you know, as a kid, I kind of struggled with problem solving quite a bit. And I found that problem solving was something that I was able to improve through my collaging because a lot of the time, the images that you're using are a one-time use once you make that cut, that's it. So, uh, oh, let me just tap that. So, the moment of truth. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Yes, they're cuticle scissors. They're very, very, very tiny. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at the pharmacy. Um, mine, I got this from the Dollarama. This just opens up and it's this really cute little kit. Um, don't, be con don't be confused about any of these because I use these for collaging as well. I use my tweezers for very, very, very tiny pieces that I can't really handle well with just my fingers. I use this little cuticle pusher here. This can press things down once I've glued them down. I don't want to get fingerprints or get like my grubby hands all over my print. This is kind of like a nice hands-free I like to use the tools that I, that I find around. I did buy this purposefully for collaging. Um, I had a, a pair of cuticle scissors before that kind of got dull and I, I wanted to replace it and found all these tools with it. And I was like, well, how can I use these with my collaging too? And these come in handy. These are almost always on my desk whenever I'm cutting and pasting. So the moment of truth. Do, do, do. Oh, it fits. It's actually even bigger than I expected. So now this is where I kind of play around with, because this could be a crown or now it can be kind of like a halo. So do we want it tilted this way? Maybe I'm going to tilt it that way. Not sure yet. So we want to make sure that it's going to go with the composition. But so far, 
our baby queen's gonna hang out in this little situation here by the moon. And let's see what we have at the bottom. So we've got quite a bit of space down at the bottom too. Got some flowers here. This is why I was saying not to worry about any kind of text that might be left on the image. We have these wonderful motifs that we can kind of just throw around here. I do want to take care of that seam. So I did have this. This is the, the jigsaw part that I, I enjoy doing. Kind of just throwing things around, seeing what works. See what we're gonna do. That's something there. Oh, did my camera freeze on everyone? Is my camera frozen for everybody else? Are we good? Okay, we're good. All right. I think the only other, oh, right, I have my lily pad. So maybe we'll get to that one in a minute. Let's see here. I got my candle. So this one, I had another image of the candle with the full candle holder. But because I kind of have intentions for this to kind of be behind my baby royalty, I took this one with the half, with the half holder. And everyone let me know, because I am seeing that I'm a little, I'm a little choppy here. Let me just check my connection. Okay, we're good. All right. I don't know if we'll get to any gluing. I hope everyone's been able to at least get some stuff glued down. I'm so meticulous about my cutting. Oops, sorry for hitting that there. So let's speed this up. So this is an interesting piece because it's got a flame. But if we look closely, if I cut close enough around that flame, the background should not be included. So it should be, should be okay. We should be able to maintain and keep that flame. And if we don't, uh, I don't have my gold paper out right now, but I have some of this really cool stuff. I forgot to mention this at the beginning. This stuff is so, so super cool. And if you ever get a chance to go check out your local dollar store's crafting area, um, see if they have this. This is all stickers. This is a sticker sheet. So what I like to do with this is I'll flip it over I'll trace whatever I need to over here on some uh, tissue paper, which I definitely ran out of before today. And then I'll transfer it over here and I'll cut it out. And then I have this shape, any shape that you want, you can, sh you can cut out of this. And it's really easy. Um, it's already sticky, ready to go. It's just a little difficult to get it going, of course but just to show you. So that's all sticker. And they come in all sorts of colors. I have silver, I have gold, I have magenta, I have purple, I have red, I have aqua, I have blue. I bought them all because you just never know. And I like to experiment. Uh, crafting at the dollar store, like the craft area is so much fun. Um, if, you, if you get a chance, I, you know, risking speaking about COVID, if you guys are able to be out and you know get into a shop right now and you're able to go through some crafting, definitely take a look and see what you can find. There's so many interesting things and it doesn't have to be paper either, right? It could be, uh, what do I have here? It could be some of this crazy ribbon, right? You can use this as kind of trimming and I've used most of the the silver one, that second one from the left, that's already done. Um, you can do that. I also found these cute little vials of glitter. So the way these would be used, this is free, this is like free flowing glitter. So this would be good to be used with like a white glue or a Mod Podge. Maybe you want to like paint out a shape or a letter or whatever have you. And, you know, once that's painted out, 
you sprinkle some of this on, you let it completely dry before you move it or you touch it, and then you dust it off and you've got, you know, some cool, maybe a little slightly 3D glittery motifs. And these also come in a whole bunch of other colors, dollar store. Um, the thing that's really great about collage is that you don't have to go to the art store to get what you need to make what you'd like to make. And you don't even need to go to the dollar store either, really. Um, you'd be surprised what you can get by just using, you know, an old Kleenex box or maybe some old fabric from, you know, a shirt that you don't wear anymore or, you know, some old lace from an old dress or th there's so many different things, sequins, gems, sand even if you're going for a different kind of realistic natural texture the, the the possibilities are endless so i just realized i'm cutting out of frame here so let's get back to this candle let's see here so for everyone creating at home what kind of elements have you included in your universe do you have people do you have animals? Do you have buildings? Is your background or is your environment realistic or is it like a pattern? What do you got going on? A llama and a unicorn. That sounds like a lot of fun. I feel like there might need to be a rainbow in there somewhere. I don't know. What do you think? Llamas are so fun. They, they're such great animals. That sounds like a really great combination. You do have a rainbow. <laughs> that sounds perfect. And again, you know, if you'd like to post, if you do post things online, you'd like to show your collage off afterwards, I'd love to see them. Please use cut paste or hashtag, hashtag cut paste chill. And then I'll be able to take a look and see what everyone's been creating at home. Oh, I love these scissors so much. Every time I'm done cutting something with little rivets and dips and bumps, I'm like, oh, I got every single one and it doesn't look jagged. It looks nice and smooth. Uh, it was actually another collage artist that told me about these scissors when I first started cutting and pasting. Um, the artists over at the group of 7 billion. Um, yeah, one night I was looking at one of their cat collages and I asked them, how do you get those fine details? I mean, I'd like to try with my scissors, but I can only get so much. And they told me cuticle scissors. So I hope I was able to impart, you know, a really cool funky tip that maybe one of you might take on in your collage making. All right, so we've got our candle. So I was playing or thinking of the idea of the candle being here. And you know what? I kind of like that. But what if Playing around here. See that? That could be something. And we got to figure out this background now. I think that will probably, that will be helpful. All right, so let's, I still, I'm still happy with this. I think that's so adorable. I still don't know how I want it to sit on her head, but regardless, baby's got a crown now. That makes me very happy. And I think we'll, I think we'll put that rose there. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now for the messy, messy, messy part. I'll consider throwing that in later. We'll see. I want to get something going here. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, so this part you may or may not see on camera. I will try my best. I am a very uh, thorough gluer. So what I like to make sure when I'm using my glue sticks that I'm using enough that in a couple of hours when it's drying or when it's dry, it's not all just gonna kind of flake apart on me. So I am pretty aggressive with my gluing. I'm being very modest right now because the camera shake is not pleasant, so. <laughs> And you know, you can glue onto the cardboard, you can glue onto the paper, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm choosing to glue onto the cardboard because the image that I have is wider than the cardboard. So I'll need to cut off the excess and I don't want that excess to be covered in glue. And you know, I'm going back to the edges because that's typically where things tend to lift the fastest when they're drying. But you still have to work considerably fast because this stuff does, it does dry pretty quickly. Hey, Stilo, someone noticed the grid that you use underneath. And I yeah. also think that's a fantastic tool. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the, how that helps you as you're gluing? Yeah, uh, this is a really great surface to work on because it's my cutting board. So whenever I'm choosing to maybe cut with an X-Acto knife or correct, cut directly onto the surface, this is really helpful to basically not ruin the desk underneath and chop it up with my blades and my scissors. Um, it's also got a ruler at the edge. So this is in inches and on the other side, it's centimeters. So I can kind of, you know, roughly measure things out before I glue things down or before I cut them. Um, and then it's just a really nice stable surface to, surface to work on. I can get it messy, I can wipe it down. And, you know, my, my desk underneath doesn't get all destroyed. So um, these are great to have. Again, you can get really small ones. Um, actually, I have these wonderful little small ones you can get at the dollar store and they come with uh, an X-Acto knife too. So it's already ready to go. These giant ones though, um, you're probably gonna have to go through an art store to get one or maybe even like Staples, um, but they're, they're great and they take up the whole space of your desk and it's really great protection. And speaking of surfaces, someone else asked if you varnish your piece at the end. It's a good question too. And that's a good question. You know, sometimes, I guess in the past I have, so the 89 Dames ones, the 89 Dames collages that we were talking about earlier, those ones are pretty much varnished because um, the glue that I was using to do the transfer was Mod Podge, which is basically like a, a fancy schmancy white glue. Um, and that dries clear, it dries with this nice kind of gloss to it, and it dries really kind of hard, really solid. Um, so those I use for, I use um, kind of a varnish, but that's kind of a consequence of the actual piece. Something like this, I wouldn't necessarily because um, a lot of my hand cut collages using found images, the paper texture and quality is always different. So I like to make sure that the quality of the paper is coming through because sometimes that texture is important for the image too. Um, so yeah, so I, <laughs> you see me rotating this, it's because I'm a left-handed person and <laughs> I have to line this up to make sure that I'm going to glue this down the right time once. <laughs> Don't wanna lift this up. A lot of these old magazines, you know, once you glue them down, you can't lift them up or else you'll you'll tear them completely and destroy them. So let's see what we can do here. I'm just, you can't see it on the camera, I apologize. I'm just lining up the corners here to make sure that we can lay this down properly. Oh, the pressure is on. All 
right. Boom, okay, so it's laying on top of the glue right now. One of the other tools I forgot to mention that I love to use, this is called a bone folder. It's not made of actual bone, although I believe there was a time in art history where these were made of bone. Um, this is just a hard resin plastic. And these are really great to help smooth things down without using your fingers. I already have glue all over my fingertips and that's kind of <laughs> really damaging sometimes if you glue something down and you use your hands to kind of smooth it over and you, you leave all your grubby fingerprints. So and I see that I've frozen once again. Let me know when, okay, I think we're back. So I'm just gliding this edge up and down the image just to make sure I'm smoothing out any air bubbles, any pockets of air, because when this eventually dries, it'll be really, really hard to smooth it down then. Um, the paper itself will be a little bit harder with the glue and you won't have any way to get into that air bubble to pop it unless you kind of cut into the image and you don't want to do that. Stilo, do you have any ideas of something that you could use at home that you might be able to find to do something similar? As a bone holder? Hmm. I would think, oh, that's a good idea or a good question. I'm thinking um, maybe a spoon or the edge of like the handle of a butter knife. Oh, or um, someone's mentioned a ruler, a popsicle. A ruler, a popsicles. With a ruler, I would suggest, because I, I have a ton of these awesome, awesome metal rulers. I wouldn't suggest a metal ruler because they're really sharp on the edge. Plastic ruler would be great. Popsicle stick would be awesome. Um, trying to see what else I got here in my studio that I could use. The handle of paintbrush. Or you know what else I like to do is if I have another piece of clean paper, this is just an example, I'll put it over top and then I'll go over with my hand with like a really light fist and some circles to really smooth everything down. So that's another option there for you. So we've got this finally glued down and it looks like we won't have too much text to worry about. So I'm going to gently cut this piece off or away. And this is why this mat is so handy because I don't need to change surfaces. I don't need to move to another table. It's right here for me. Perfect. So we've got that. Now, so I'm looking here and the goal in this part is to cover up that text. We don't need to go too crazy. We don't need to go too high up, but I do, actually, this is a great, this is gonna help me on my end. You might not be able to see it, but I'm going to line up this ruler at the bottom here. And then I can see where my image, actually, I will show you guys. I can see where my image ends, where my cardboard ends. So I can kind of line this up and see how much of this image I will have to cut. So, putting that here. Okay. So I'm just kind of playing around with how much of this landscape I want to include. And I think we'll do, we'll do a, a nice amount. I like this mountainscape here. I like how that kind of feeds into the reds of the background here. I don't do it on purpose, but I do happen to color coordinate very often. <laughs> so now before I commit this, because I'm, always wanting to make sure 
scale my elements out again. Where are we gonna put everybody? So now that we have a better idea of our escape. And we had the flower here. Now I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do about this being cut off here. This might be something that I return to even after the workshop this evening, because I'm interested in how we can smooth her into the landscape. I thought about dipping her behind, but I don't really know what I would fill this area up with yet. So I think that's kind of where that lily, that lily pad is gonna come in. And you know what? I'm going to cut it out right now because I'm impatient and I wanna know. And actually, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Okay, I just want to see where this seam sits behind her head and where this candle can be placed. Yeah, I like that candle higher up into the side. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like I might even cut into this mountainside just to separate this mountain from the background and like scoot her shoulder in there. Maybe. If I can figure out what to do under here, we'll see. So the last piece, the lily pad. And just want to check, how are we for time? Okay, we're good for time. I don't know if we'll finish it by the end, but we'll, you know, I have a good idea of what my world is looking at like, and at least what my one soul inhabitant will look like for a bit. And this is cut off too. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it looks like I might have some more elements that I can include. So. Let's finalize this cut. And how's everyone doing? Tongue depressor is wider. Yes, 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 yes. How's everybody doing? How's everyone's collages coming? Anyone have any questions about tools, tips, tricks? Um, play around with, I'm, I'm really interested to see if anyone finds any images that they can play around in this sense. You know, let's try weaving some, images together instead of just layering. That's kind of just one part of collaging. When you get into the weaving part, you can get so creative. Everyone's doing great, awesome. Is anyone noticing any colors that are predominant in their worlds? Anyone creating a world in just black and white? Or just texture? I'm trying to think what I can add to the front with my little baby queen. If anything, one of the things I like to do when I do come across this kind of situation where, you know, if I, if I have an image and it's definitely going to be in the foreground I'm gonna cut that shadow off a bit. If I have an image and I know it's gonna be in the foreground, but it's awkwardly cut or truncated because of text or because of you know the original framing of the photo, um, what I usually like to do is I go straight for flowers. And I know I have two roses and a lily pad here. Um, so I think in that case, I only have these little gems on her crown so maybe it will be another gemstone of some sort. I am a collector of old magazines as I've mentioned before and one of my favorite magazines to come across um, and they're rare because people don't really typically hang on to them much anymore but they're like jewelry making magazines and old gemstone magazines from the 70s and 80s 
um, people who used to do like DIY um, jewelry making and like gem hunting and digging and excavating some of the most amazing and beautiful images of stones. Um, so I have a collection of those images. Maybe I will dip into that and see what I can find. Or maybe an animal. See what kind of animals I can find. And, you know, I won't bore you all with digging through because, you know, to dig, <laughs> dig through my collection is quite a bit, but I always suggest and encourage you, if, if you find that collaging is something you definitely want to be doing and you definitely want to continue doing, start collecting things from anywhere. Um, old gift wrap. I have tons of old gift wrappers. Um, stuff from shipping packaging. Kleenex boxes, old books, old magazines. Um, I hesitate to say newspaper only because the ink and paper used, like the newsprint paper and the ink used for newspapers, they run a lot with different types of glues and they also fade pretty quick. But I mean, literally anything. Um, scrapbooking paper, calendars, actually, it wasn't this background, the mountains that you're looking at, but I had another picture of mountains. I don't, I think I put it away already. Um, and that was from a calendar. Some really incredible calendars with landscapes and images. Um, anything with just really great mindful photography. Um, uh, Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, start start collecting images that you feel moved by. And like, you might not even know what you're using it for or why you're keeping it. Um, and that's okay, because it's got a use and it's it has a purpose. You just haven't been enlightened to it yet. Um, and I, I speak from experience because I have had clippings that I've collected from like high school from years ago. And I'm just using them now. <laughs> and I'm so relieved when I come across them because I'm like, I need, I need this image and I don't know where I'm going to find it. And I'll go through my images and I'll go through my collection and I'll find something that I've had for years. And I've, you know, I've flipped through it. I've looked at it every time I've done any kind of collaging and just kind of ignored it. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're I'm in need of an apple. I don't know why. I, I just need an apple for this piece. And you flip through, you find this apple that you, for whatever reason, you've saved from high school. No rhyme or reason to it, but now it's got use. So that's kind of what I like to encourage. I'm just playing around here. Seeing what, well, that's interesting. See, I like to do this kind of, it's just a hook. It's a layering, but it's not. That's interesting. And it will actually, that's like right at the bottom of the piece. I think, well, I might lose some of it, but I think that's an interesting uh, composition. And then maybe what I would do is, oh, my video quality just dropped. All right. I would do, hmm. Yeah, a little framing. I think we're onto something here. And, you know, I'm cognizant of that edge here. So I might shift her a bit more into the center of the frame to preserve the petals of that flower. 
which means that up here will maybe get shifted around just a little bit because I, I do want to include that candle and I do like how um, that piece of peacock feather has melded with the candle. So yeah, that's what I have right now. I think, yeah. I honestly think I'm gonna look for a couple more elements later on um, to add to it, but I, I will definitely show the finished piece when it's done. I'm just too meticulous and I, I'm cognizant of the time now. <laughs> I don't wanna hold you guys up for too long. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's cut and paste in uh, a bit of a nutshell. This was so much fun. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that what I got here in front of me, I'm, I would really love to see what everyone else is working on. I'm so happy you all joined me this evening. Um, this was so much fun, Stilo. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do great. so that we can share your finished work and so that other people can share what they've created, I'm gonna put my email into the chat right yes. now. Perfect. Um, there we go. And what you can do is you can take an image of your work that you've created and send it to me. Um, and then we can share it through the Vancouver Art Gallery channels. You can send ideas that you got from Stilo and the activities today. Um, yeah, and any feedback that you have as well. We have people in the chat thanking you for your time. And I got so, I thought I knew about cut and paste and I got <laughs> so many new ideas from you, Stilo. And um, just because of your experience and just, I'm going to just make sure that you're popping back onto video here. Yes, yes. Let me start my video up again. On, focused on the collage here. You know, pop this one back. Yeah. There we oh, go. I think you got to give me the, the go ahead yeah. here. Oh, no, did I do the wrong one? There we go. Ah, oh, okay. And we're back. Someone is asking for your Instagram handle if you're yes. comfortable to share I that. Can drop that in the chat. Make sure. You. I'll turn um, you also have a great webpage too. I believe it's mouthfulofstars.com. It is. It is mouthfulofstars.com. Um, it might be under some construction right now, a little bit of a rehaul, okay. but please find me here at Stilo Star on Instagram. Um, you'll see all of my newest creations up there. I'm working on a tarot deck right now. It's all hand cut collage, um, exactly like this, pretty much at this scale. Um, so that's quite a challenge and it's been really fun so far. I'm, I'm about a third of the way through. Um, yeah, you can find all my stuff there. Any other workshops that I'll be doing, you'll be able to find out uh, all the listings on that account. Um, and yeah, you'll be able to find me. You can send me a message. You can send me an email if you'd like, if you have any questions or concerns or looking for tips or tricks, whatever you'd like. Well, thank you so much. I think everyone else would join in, in thanking you as well. Um, we want to thank also the people that support our art at home programs and make them possible, which is Canada Life. I have a slide up here right now, which is an exhibition that's on at the Vancouver Art Gallery right now called Jan Wade Soul Power, another incredible artist um, nice. uplifting the voices of Black creatives and activists. And also uh, what's important to Jan Wade is something you mentioned is creating something out of nothing or out of anything and creating and sending a message. We've got another pretty exciting exhibition on at the Vancouver Art Gallery called Yoko Ono Growing Freedom. It's on until May 1st. And we've created in response to that exhibition, a space that's called the Young Activist Reading Room. So you can come in and relax, read, get some ideas of how you can use your voice um, and activism towards creating change in the world. 
And join us, please, for Family Day, February 21st. We're going to be using a lot of the ideas that we talked about today. You can see some yeah. of the materials. We're going to take inspiration from Jan Wade's work. We're going to take inspiration from Stilo's work. And we are going to completely transform everyday materials um, and also get a chance to do a really cool activity and art hunt in the gallery to get us moving around and enjoying the space if it's safe for you to do so and if it's comfortable for you to do so. So, oh, and of course, we want to thank Canada Life. That's what we want to thank for making these <laughs> programs possible. Can't thank you enough, Stilo, um, oh, for joining so us much. today. What a joy and a pleasure. And again, I put my um, email in the chat, everyone. We love having your feedback, your thoughts and ideas and images of your work. So feel free to email me directly or hashtag cut, paste, chill or at Van Art Gallery. And we'll get a chance to all celebrate this kind of work together. Thank you so much, Stilo, for your generosity with time, for sharing your joy and your passion and the power of cutting and paste. It's, it's been such a joy. Thank you so much for having me. This was a great evening slash afternoon for everyone at home in DC. <laughs> Thank you so, so, so much. And I hope we can do this again soon. I would really love to do this again. Please. I would That'd really be great. love to work together again. Thank you again, everybody. Wishing wellness, stay safe, stay connected to each other and the world around you through art. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>